Are you ready for a pattern review? Or are you ready for a sew along? Well, it doesn't matter because I'm gonna be giving you both in this video. So if that's some content you would like to see, please continue to watch. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs and in this video I'm going to be giving you a very quick pattern review as well as a sew along But I will caution you that I am also putting a separate video together for a fly front zipper because it's not in this Pattern it's not in the instructions if you take out your instructions for the pattern we are doing today which is 6946 or 6947 it will tell you to construct a fly front zipper but it doesn't show you how but i got you covered and i'm going to show you how to do that fly front zipper in this video today all right now if you are new to the channel hello ciao guten tag aloha hola konnichiwa wagwan sambanani salon bonjour if you are returning you guys know what to do by now go get you a quick snack something to drink come on back so we could go ahead and talk about it all right so without further ado and to keep this pattern review short sweet and to the point in order for you to get over to the sew along so you can see that fly front zipper because I'll tell you, you may be doing your fly front zippers this way. <laughs> All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into it, starting with the pattern description. So the first things first is I'm going to tell you the pattern that we are reviewing and so along for it's Butterick 6946 and Butterick 6947. The only difference is a sizing between misses and women. That's it. Nothing else changes in this pattern on this pattern. All right. Let's go ahead and talk about the pattern description. So for this pattern, I'm gonna give my own because I did not look at Simplicity website, all right? So for this pattern, I'm just gonna talk about the shorts today because that's what I made. The top, I did not, so when you're seeing this, the top is still being worked and I'm not putting it in as a two piece simply because when I did the vest and the shorts last week, many of you was like, the video is great, but it's long even though it has chapters. So I'm gonna separate those two to make this video as short as possible, but give you as much details as possible like I normally do, all right? On to the pattern description, it's for the shorts. So the shorts are pleated shorts. You have pleats in the front, darts in the back, all right? This pattern also features side seam front pockets. You will not have a pocket for the back. So when you cut pockets, you will only be cutting two pockets, one for the left, one for the, right and it's pretty much just front pocket so you will have pockets and a side front and pocket which that side front and pocket forms kind of like a facing of its own um, in order for you to put the back and show that it's a pocket there if that makes sense you will see it in the sew along all right it also features carriers which are optional for sure you will also have a hook and eye closure and a fly front zipper that we will be doing together all right so that is the pattern description for this pattern let's talk about the sewing skill level so for this pattern the sewing skill level is rated as average do i feel this pattern is average <clears throat> absolutely all right so yes it is average because like I told you, the instructions does not show you how to put on a fly front zipper. In the instructions, it will say, go ahead and put on the fly front. Well, if you never did a fly front, how you go do it if they, does, if they do not show you how to do it? So I'm taking the worry and the stress off of you and show you, baby, how to do one. To where you will say, Rochelle, thank you so much. I got you. I got you. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the notion shoes. So for the shorts, which is what we're talking about today, the top will be in a later video to where I can give you all the details about the top as well. But for the shorts, the only thing that you need outside of the hook and eye closure piece, you will need a seven inch exposed or all purpose zipper. Now you guys know my zipper is a little long. You'll see that in the sew along only because I like to keep the zipper out of my way when I'm sewing but you will need at least a seven inch zipper, but I'm gonna tell you, in my defense, I prefer a longer zipper to keep things out of the way. You could always cut it off, but you could never add, okay? So I would advise you to do at least a nine inch zipper instead of a seven inch zipper. 
That's just my take on it, all right? Let's talk about the fabric use, of course. Of course, you guys know what fabric I use. I will show, I showed this pattern. Actually, I showed the fabric, but not the pattern because it was kind of like a surprise of which pattern won, simply because this is part of hashtag make night 2023. Also, um, this is the Butterick free space pattern as part of hashtag uh, make night 2023. And this pattern was also put on my request line. You guys know I've been sewing from my request line. So you guys can be heard. Now I have told you guys how to get to my request line. You go to the community, you go to my channel, go to the community tab, and then look for it where it says request line sew along. You could put your request. I will get to your request as I can. I'm going through a lot of requests. So give me time to get that to you. Number one. Number two, I'm only going to do a sew along for patterns that that would pretty much require a so long. I'm not doing any out of print patterns. If you cannot get it in Joann's, I will not be doing a so long for it simply because that's just kind of like a one on one so along instead of like a everybody so along. No offense to anyone whatsoever. So if the pattern is out of print or it's just in PDF, I am not going to be doing a sew along for that, all right? So I do have a list that I've been keeping track based off of the individuals who have put their requests in about a good month, month and a half, I got you. I just, I, I still have to get to the other stuff that I have to attain to as well. So I do appreciate your patience as well. All right, but back to the fabric. The fabric is from House of Mommy Water. This fabric is called Giddy Up. This is the shorts because you can't see it if I have them on, right? <laughs> so I took them off. This is what it looked like. Now, before you get on to me, you guys know like, I love y'all, right? Yes, I walked around all day in and out Dollar General and Walmart and Walgreens and CVS because y'all know on Saturdays I do coupon shopping. Me and my husband and my kids, we do that. So I was out and about. He didn't say nothing to me and he let his wife go out with marks. Okay, y'all see these blue bags? Like, really? Babe, let me go out with markings all over my front. And then do you think people were staring like this? Like, <laughs> in his defense, he wasn't staring, all right? <laughs> but I finished these shorts um, Friday night, and I was like, you, you know what? I'm going to wear them. I figured if I sprayed them with some water, it was going to go away, but that didn't happen. These will be thrown in the washing machine today, Saturday, um, and I will probably wear them sometime next week also because I'll be taking a little small trip. Um, next weekend for sure. Um, so I have a lot going on this weekend into next week and we'll be finishing up a lot of things by Friday before I go out of town. All right, let's talk about the pattern pieces. Now I'm not going to get into pattern pieces simply because I will be talking about the pattern pieces in the sew along, but you will need eight pattern pieces, pattern piece number 11 through 18. All right. Pattern sizing, so let's talk about pattern sizing. So it comes in four separate envelope, which means this pattern is size inclusive. We all been talking about, let's make these patterns size inclusive to where anyone, plus size, misses, whatever, could fit into these patterns. That is one reason why I wanted to do this pattern to where there's no reason why no one could sew this pattern because it's for everyone. The skinny, the in-between, the plus size, and everything in between, all of that, all right? So for the pattern sizes, it's four patterns. So the first pattern is four through 12, 12 to 20 on that second pattern. Those are the message sizes. And then when you get over to the woman's sizes, it's 20W to 28W, and then 30W to 38W. Now the size that your girl cut was two different envelopes. That is why I'm showing both, all right. So for the waistband, which is pattern piece number 18, I am also in the midst of sizes. So I cut a size 18, which gave me a waist measurement of a 34. You guys know my waist measurement is a 33.5. Right now I am on a waist loss journey and I'll talk about that in another video on how much I lost. So far I started August 1st. We are currently 25 days in. Yes, we're 26 days in as of the viewing of this video, okay? 
Um, but by the time you guys are seeing it, it will be the 27th or the 28th. So we will be that many days in. I started August 1st and I am down more than 10 pounds. Thank me later. You want to know, I'll tell you guys about that <laughs> in an upcoming video. All right. Also, um, the size that I cut, so 18 for the waistband. When it comes to the actual shorts, the front and back pattern piece, I had to cut out the 20W only because your girl got some hips, okay? We have discussed this. You guys know, your girl is rocking a 44.5 inch hip. So between my waist and my hips, it's like 11, sometimes 12 inch difference. So sometimes I'm in the, uh, I'm definitely in the smaller size at the waist, but when it comes to the hip, your girl gotta pick the bigger size. Am I mad about that? I absolutely no, okay? So, um, so sometimes for many, it can be challenging if you are in one envelope. Now, one thing I will mention is this envelope has a size 20, but we're not gonna do all that grading because it would have looked awkward and I didn't wanna do all that grading because it's a sew along, okay? If I'm not gonna show you how to grade up because we have done that before, why do it, right? So that's why I made sure to use two different envelopes for this sew along, all right? Let's go ahead and talk about modifications. Did I make any modifications? No, I sewed it out the pattern, okay? the pattern package okay so this one i did not make any modifications but will i make any modifications to this pattern um to be honest with you probably not i do see that when i did so basically when i did butterick 6901 last week for the sew along um i can see that pattern having a fly front uh zipper now i will show you how you could change that pattern from a regular, you know, kind of like that pattern has a facing, but you can definitely change that and make it a fly front with a facing. Mm, yep, <laughs> thank me later for that, all right? Um, but other than that, no, I did not make any modifications and on this pattern, I wouldn't make any modifications outside of now, T from Crumpet Tea and Sewing, she did a pattern review and I will link to it in the description box below, but she made a button fly um closure instead of doing the zip fly so i'll link to it in the description box below so you can see what hers came out to be i think she made like two or three different versions of that same pattern so like i told you guys before t really used her patterns to the best of her ability okay she will sew the same pattern two and three times to give you a complete pattern review of what it was like to sew all right so let's go ahead and talk about, did it look like the photos or the drawing on the pattern envelope? Yes, 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 yes. It does for sure, all right? Are the instructions easy to follow? Yes, they are easy to follow, but no, they're not easy to follow. So basically where you will get trapped up at is where they talk about the fly front. All the way up to the fly front, the instructions are easy to follow. However, I will say this, the instructions are exactly the same as Butterick 6901. That's the so long I did last week. All the way up until you get to the fly front. Once you get to the fly front, if you don't know how to do a fly front, go to the fly front portion of this video. And then you can refer back to Butterick 6901 because everything is the same except for putting on the waistband. All right, so everything is pretty much the same except for the waistband and the fly front. The instructions are Pretty much the same. So if you do not want to watch the sew along and you want to read the instructions, I don't know why, I'm just saying, but to each his own, um, you could definitely do that as well. All right, let's talk about um, likes and dislikes. Yes, let's get into it. So likes, I love, I love the fly front on these uh, shorts. I also like the length. I think I should have made the length a little bit longer, but I will say, if you are a woman that's shorter than 5'5", five five, you definitely want to cut off some of the length. Why? Because it is long. If you look at how long they are on me and I am 5'6", it will be definitely almost down to your knees. If that's what you're looking for, by all means, keep the length. But if you are a female that's about 5'7 and up, definitely add some length. Simply because they're going to look like coochie cutters on you. I am not lying. Now, because I have a booty, booty, 
whatever you want to call it, a badonka donk, junk in your trunks, whatever you want to call it. Because I have all that going on in the trunk section, in the butt area, I should have definitely accounted for that because it's going to be a ride. I should have accounted for that and lengthened it a little bit so it did make it look like it was a little short, but I'm okay with that. I do like it. I know what I'm looking for next time I sew this pattern simply because I will be sewing this pattern. All right. That's the only dislike that I have for this pattern outside of no fly front zipper instructions. All right. Um, first time experiences. I do not have any first time experience for this pattern. I have done everything in this pattern before. So no first time experiences whatsoever. Would I recommend this pattern to others? Yes. That's why I did a sew along. Would I sew this pattern again? I already kind of said that. Yes, I would. And I will be sewing this pattern again, probably in the summertime next year for kind of like, because I like to wear shorts in the summertime and I can sew different colors, you know, of fabric and just kind of like pair them with different things in my wardrobe and have a lot of pairs of shorts, a lot of pair of pants, what have you for this pattern. So yes, I will sew it again. Let's talk about my pattern rating. So for this pattern, I wish I could give it a five out of five because it is that good. However, because the instructions are missing the fly front zipper, I have to be honest with you guys and give it a four out of four. Reason being is because if there's not a sew along for this pattern, if you have never done a fly front zipper, you can definitely get tripped up without looking at other videos for fly front. Let's just say YouTube is not available for you to watch a fly front zipper. It needs to be in the pattern instruction so you could kind of get that experience, right? So I'm definitely taking one point off for that and rating this pattern as a four out of five only for that. However, I would definitely rate it as a five out of five if that was in the instructions because everything else is flawless in the directions. All right. Well, that's it for this pattern review. I hope you enjoyed. So let's go ahead and get over to the sew along. But before you do so, go ahead to the concession stand, AKA your kitchen and go ahead and get you something to drink or a refill and a quick snack. And I'll give you 10 seconds to do so. So we could go ahead and get into the sew along. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the next sew along. So this is part of my Make 9 2023. This is actually the free space that was for a Butterick summer pattern. And this is from the summer collection of Butterick. Um, so I am using Butterick 6946, but you could also use Butterick 6947, which has a size range of, I think, it range 22 W it's in the W sizes. I'll put it up on the screen for both patterns so you can see as well. Um, but for this one, I will be cutting a size 18 because the size 18 is as close to my measurements as possible. I rather make the waistband a little big, try them on and then see if I need to cut it down before attach it on the waistband. So instead of me cutting my waistband right now, I'll cut my waistband after trying on my pants to make sure that it fits. But I'm pretty sure 18 is the right size I need to cut. 16 seems like it may be a little too tight. Um, and I wanted a little looser fit to where I could add a belt to wear with these. Um, now for these shorts, I am possibly doing view C. Um, the only difference is the cuff. So literally I could do either C or D. All right. But this is the pattern that we are going to be doing a sew along for Butterick 6946 or Butterick 6947. So let's go ahead and get into the tools and supplies you need in order to construct the shorts. All right. So let's go ahead and get into the tools and supplies you need in order to construct this camp shirt plus short or two piece set summer short set. Um, but the first thing you're gonna need is of course your pattern and your pattern instructions. You will need some pens or wonder clips. I have both pens and wonder clips. If you prefer to use the wonder clips instead of the pens, you will also need scissors, one for paper, one for fabric. I never mix the two there. I use rotary cutters to cut my fabric, one for paper, one for fabric. Never mix the two there as well. 
I have a pencil or a pen, and that's basically to make any adjustments to the pattern if you need to, but I'm gonna show you how to take measurements and I'm also going to split this into one video so you can go to the measurements video, how to figure out what size you need to cut. It's gonna be a separate video instead of all in one video as well. So it's gonna be here, but I'm gonna also create separate ones so you could go to that moving forward on how to size up or size down your pattern. So I'm not gonna be doing a size down in this video, but just to show you kind of like how you choose your measurements as close as possible. All right, you will also need rulers. I have my see-through ruler and I have my, um, both of them are see-through rulers actually. You'll also need marking tools. I have a disappearing ink marker here. You'll need a tape measure and that's to take your measurement. Um, we're doing the shorts first. So you will need to take your waist measurement where you wanna wear your shorts as well as your um, hip measurement where, you know, the fullest part of your hips is your hip measurement. I also advise you to take your upper bust, which is underneath your arms, as well as your full bust. Now, I always cut my top pattern based off of my full bust because it's larger instead of my full bust. So I take, once again, I take my upper bust and my full bust measurement. My upper bust is right underneath the arms, right? And my upper bust is larger than my full bust. So I always use my full bust measurement because it's larger in order to cut what size I want. And then I also add two inches to that to give me a good fit without being too tight, all right? But we'll get there here shortly when we start doing the top. And then you will also need drafting paper and tape. And the reason why I have tape here is simply because if you are sizing your pattern up or down, you're going to need some tape. So get used to having tape and drafting paper. I do not have the drafting paper on the table with me right now, but it is in my stash, all right? And the last thing you will need is a calculator. Now, the calculator is basically for you to figure out what size it's going to be after you take out the seam allowance, all right? But those are all the things that you're going to need in order to complete this pattern, Butterick 6946 or Butterick 6947, all right? So let's go ahead and get into the pattern pieces and the pattern instructions for this pattern. All right, so let's get into the pattern instructions for Butterick 6946 or Butterick 6947. But before we do that, let me tell you a couple of additional notions or you know items that you may want to have out right now. I have two labels, one for my shorts, one for my top. So I have two of my own labels. Another thing you want is um, pattern weights to cut your fabric as well. And then you, for your notions, you will need some buttons according to the back of the pattern envelope. For view A, you need 10 half inch buttons. View B, you need 11 half inch buttons. Now I'm deciding on if I wanna do both or just one. So we will see by the time I get this posted, all right? And then for the shorts, you will need a seven inch exposed or all purpose zipper and a hook and eye bar, okay? So that's everything that you need. So let's go ahead and get into the instructions. Now, we are doing the shorts first and then we'll do the top because the top is just basically a button down shirt. I have those on my channel already, but I know you guys are more focused on the shorts instead of the shirt. So we are gonna do the shorts first. So in terms of the pattern pieces that you will need is pattern piece 11 through 18. Also, because I am using 45 inch fabric, I am going to pay attention to the 45 inch fabric line. Now I haven't determined if I'm gonna do view C or view D, but it's pretty much the same. So because I'm using 45 inch fabric, I will follow this cutting layout right here. If you notice pattern piece number 11 is with the right side of the pattern facing down on the fabric and the wrong side of the pattern facing up, all right? So, and then you're just gonna cut out according to this layout if you are using 45 inch fabric. If you are using a different um, width, then choose accordingly, lay it out and choose um, how you're gonna do that as well accordingly, all right? 
Now also make sure that you interface the waistband as well as your fly. So you're going to be interfacing pattern piece number 12, 13, and 18 on that. In terms of pockets, um, which is size 14, I'm sorry, which is pattern piece number 14, I am going to be cutting it out the same fabric. Now, the pocket they keep saying lining, lining is basically if you wanna completely line it, but I am lining it with the same fabric, all right? The seam allowance for this pattern, the seam allowance is 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So anytime I say, so your seam is basically 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm talking about until otherwise stated. All right, so make sure that you are looking at the glossaries. I highly advise you to get familiar with fly front zipper, what that means, but I will be showing you how to do it on the machine. So I will be going to the machine to kind of walk you through how to do a fly front zipper because that's one of the things you guys keep asking me um, what I do. So I am gonna show you how to do it in this video. All right, so let's go all the way over to the shorts, which is on page, I think this is page three. Um, so we're going to start off your, you should already have your fly pieces, pattern piece 12 and 13 already, um, interface as well as pattern piece number 18. So the first thing we're going to do is not many steps. All right. We're going to make the pleats in the front. And as we are making the pleats in the front, you guys know, I like to cut down on how many times we go back and forth to the sewing machine. So we're going to make our pleats in the front as well as make our darts in the back of the pants. So you're gonna do pattern piece 11, the pleats, and then we're gonna go all the way down to number eight. So we're, <laughs> you guys know how I do. So we're gonna skip from pattern, from instruction number two, all the way to instruction number nine, and make those darts. After we make the darts, we're gonna go ahead and do our pockets. After making the pockets, we're gonna make sure that we stitch that front base the pocket in place by making sure we stitch across and the side seams. After we do that, we're gonna go ahead and do our fly front zipper. So the end seams, the crotch seams, and the side seams, we're gonna, if now this is optional in terms of carriers, we're gonna add our carriers on. If you are deciding to wear a belt or you just want carriers, we are gonna do the carriers. And then after that, we're gonna put on our face band and uh, finish it off and install our hook and eye. So that's all the things we're going to do. We're gonna try to condense it as much as possible for this sew along in terms of running back and forth to the sewing machine, all right? So if I tell you to pin several things at a, a time, that's the reason why, all right? So let's go ahead and get right on into the pattern pieces you will need in order to construct the scarf. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the pattern pieces that you will need in order to construct Butterick 6946, the shorts on this pattern. First pattern piece is pattern piece number 12, which is your right fly facing. You need to cut one of fabric and also interface one. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number 13, which is your left fly. You need to cut one of fabric and one of interfacing on this pattern piece as well. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number 14, which is your pocket. You need to cut two. Now it says lining, but like I just mentioned, I'm just going to cut it out of regular fabric. It is up to you if you wanna choose a contrast in order to do your pocket. It's just, I don't wanna do that detail for mine. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number 15, which is your side front and pocket. You need to cut to a fabric. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number 17, which is optional. It is your belt carriers. So you need to cut one of fabric for that. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number 18, which is your waistband. You need to cut one of fabric and interface one. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number 11, which is your front. You need to cut two of fabric. And the last pattern piece is pattern piece number 16, which is your back. You need to also cut two of fabric. Now, one thing I wanna mention is to make sure that you mark all of your dots and your not notches as well. So now that we talked about the pattern piece, let's get into what sides you will cut and based off of your waist measurement as well as your hip measurement. So go ahead and move all of your pattern pieces out the way. Go ahead and grab your pencil, calculator, and your measurement 
measuring tape so we could go ahead and get started with determining the finished garment measurement for both the waist and the hips. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so now what I want you to do, we're gonna go ahead and determine the sides. And I did the waistband and I did the hips for you, but I wanna show you your waist on the pattern, all right? So I'm just gonna kind of show you one sides on the waistband and one pattern piece for the hips as well, just so you get an idea of how to do this, all right? So I'm gonna move um, this off to the side. So let's grab pattern piece number 11, which is your front. We're gonna work on the front first. And what I'm gonna do now, the pattern sides that I have is pattern piece, the pattern size of 18 and 20. So I'm just gonna do it for that pattern piece because this may be the size that I'm going to be cutting, which is the size 18, all right? But let's go ahead and start with the waist measurement. So go ahead and grab your ruler. And what you wanna do is make a straight line all the way across at that waistline. So this is your waistline right here. You want to make a line all the way across. So go ahead and make your line all the way across. And you're gonna also do that on the back pattern piece as well. Now, what we're gonna do is grab our measuring tape, all right? And what we're gonna do is you're gonna go from the 18 line all the way to the other line right here and measure that and see what you get. Now I get 12 and a half. So what I'm gonna do is write down size 18, 12.5, which is 12 and a half, all right? Now, because we have two front pattern pieces, I'm gonna multiply that 12.5 by two. This is where your calculator comes into play. Now grab your calculator, and what you're going to do is take 12.5 and multiply it by two. And it gives you 25, so write 25. All right, now, we have seam allowance and the seam allowance is going to be taken out right here on this pocket. Uh, this is like a, your pocket seam allowance and at the front. Now, like I mentioned in my previous videos, it's five eighths here, five eighths here. Five eighths plus five eighths is 1.25. So you have 1.25 seam allowance for the left pant front and 1.25 for the right front pant leg, all right? Which 1.25, plus 1.25 is 2.5. So you're gonna remove the seam allowance of 2.5, all right? So we're gonna take 25 minus 2.5, and that gives you 22.5, all right? Now, that is not all you do, because now what we're gonna do is, because we have pleats at the waist area, we need to remove the pleats to get a finished garment measurement when all of it is sewn together, all right? So now what we're gonna do is grab our measuring tape again. We're gonna measure how wide the pleats are. So the pleats are two and a eighth, which is weird. So let me measure from right here. Two and a fourth. So right here, it's two and a fourth. So what I'm gonna do is measure a second time and it is two and a fourth. So I'm gonna write two and a fourth, which is 2.25, and this is 2.25 as well, all right? Now, with the pleats being 2.25 here, so I'm gonna take my calculator and write two point, or put in 2.25 for this pleat. I also have 2.25 right here. Now that becomes 4.5. Now I only showed for one pant leg, you have to do the same thing to the other pant leg. So, and so all together you have a total of four pleats, two on the left side, two on the right side. So you're going to remove not 4.25, you need to remove nine because you have 2.25, 2.25, and then the other side, 2.25, 2.25, all right? So we're gonna also remove nine inches and I'm gonna write pleats, all right? 
After you take out that nine inches, you're gonna take 22.5 minus nine. I'm hoping you're able to see that. And you get 13.5. So right here, you wanna write 13.5. And that's basically what you will get as your finished garment measurement once this is completely put together, all right? Now you're gonna do the same thing for a size 20, so I'm not gonna completely walk you through how to do that, um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and write it down and I'll tell you. So I'm gonna measure across, I'm just gonna do it kind of fast for you. And that gives me 13, so I'm gonna put 13, multiply two because I have two pattern pieces and it gives me 26. After that, I'm going to take out the seam allowance, which is 2.5. And 26 minus 2.5 is 23.5. Now, the only thing I need to do is take out the pleats, which is nine inches, and it gives me 14.5, all right? So that's where we are right now. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and move our front off to the side, and we're gonna work on our back uh, back pattern piece. But before we do so, one thing I want to mention is you're going to do the same thing at your hips. So I'm just going to give you an idea of how to do the hips. Same way your size 18, you're going to take size 18 all the way across like this. And it gives you 14.75. You're going to multiply that by two and get 29.5 and then subtract out the seam allowance for the front and the back, which is 2.5. And that gives you 27. You're gonna do the same thing for the sides 20, all right? Now move your front pattern piece out the way, grab your back pattern piece, which is pattern piece number 16. And what we're gonna do, same thing, we're gonna measure across at the waist. I'm sorry, we're gonna make a line across at the waist. Now, one thing I will mention about this line is it, it seemed like it's a kind of slants a little bit. And the reason why is because that's how it has it on the pattern. Not sure why, but to each its own. Um, so what we're going to do, the same thing as we did for the front. I'm going to write size 18 and size 20 on the pattern. And then what we're going to do is measure across at the 18 line. So we're going to measure from the center back seam at the crotch curve to the 18 line and that gives me roughly about 11 and 11 and 1 8. So I'm gonna measure a second time to make sure that that's what I got. So the second time I got 11. So I'm just gonna put 11. I'm gonna multiply that by two, which gives me 22 and take out the seam allowance of 2.5. And I'm gonna write SA for seam allowance. And then I'm gonna to go to my handy dandy calculator and take 22 minus 2.5 and get 19.5. Now, because it has a dart, I need to figure out the dart. So what I'm gonna do is take the dart at the tip and the dart is 1.5. So I'm just gonna take out 1.5 for the left side, 1.5 for the right side is three. 1.5 plus 1.5 is three inches. So we're gonna take out three inches and I'm gonna write darts. So 19.5 minus three is 16.5. All right. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the sites 20. Once again, you're gonna measure from the center back all the way across and it gives me 11.625. So I'm gonna write 11.625, multiply that by two. And that gives me 23.25. I'm gonna take out the seam allowance of 2.5. And that gives me 20.75, and then remove three inches for the dart which gives me 17.75. Now the next thing that I need to do is definitely grab pattern piece number one. And I need to check and see which one is as close to my waist measurement as possible. Now my waist measurement is a 33.5 if I'm wearing it at my natural waist. That's where that bend 
um, happens when you kind of like lean over to the side, it's a bend. That is considered your nat natural waist. But because I like wearing all of my pants pretty much right at my belly button, I'm gonna go up a little bit and I'm gonna go up to a 35 inch or 35 and a half. 35 is perfect, but 35 and a half gives me a little bit more room. So what I'm gonna do is take the size 18 that I came up with 13.5 and I'm gonna add that to the 16.5. Well, that tells me that that's a waist of a 30. That's a little too small than what I'm looking at. So now I'm gonna go to the size 20 which gives me 14.5 for the front. And then the back gives me 17.75. Well, that's a 32 and a half. So really technically this pattern is not gonna work for me, but it's okay. What's gonna happen is I'm going to size up this pattern for what I need it for, all right? So one thing I'm gonna do is cut the size 20 for this pattern and then size it up. So what I'll need to be doing is sizing up at the waist and not necessarily the hips, simply because the hips is looking spot on. So what you need to do is grab some sheet of paper, put it down, and I have showed this before, but I'm gonna kind of walk you through it one good time. So now remember, for a size 20, we ended up getting 32.25. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. Grab a, sh a small sheet of paper. Now I'm just gonna grab a scratch piece of paper. I'm gonna actually make one. So let me make scratch piece of paper just to kind of show you how you go about sizing up your pattern. So let me cut a little small piece from here. All right, so let's go ahead and kind of, I'm just gonna show you how to size up this pattern because I know I'm gonna have to size up mine. But let's just say that we are currently working at the waist and we notice that the waist is just not right. So what you're gonna do is get you some paper. Now I will not be taping it down right now because I wanna check, check on the bigger size pattern and see if it'll work be better without having to do a lot of adjustments, okay? So first things first, we wanna put paper underneath. Now this side right here kind of serves as your side seam because you have pockets, you have pleats, and you have a center front. So for this pattern, it says a size 20 finished garment measurement at the waist is a 32.25, all right? And I'll zoom it in so you can see it. Now, because I want my waist measurement to measure 35 and a half or 35.5, I need to subtract 35.5 from 32.25, what we got when we measured across. So that's 35.5 minus 32.25, which gives me 3.25. Now, essentially you have four sides. You have, you know, the sides of the front and the back on one side, right? So five eighths plus five eighths plus five eighths plus five eighths. It ends up being 2.5. Now, because you have four sides, you need to divide by four. So I'm going to take 3.25, divide that by four, and I get 0.812. All right, well, that's close to one, but it will be a little off, but that's okay. It's not too far off, but we don't wanna make it too small, but we also do not wanna make it too big, all right? So now what I'm gonna do is move my calculator, and what I'm gonna do is take this over to where you it's clean paper, Put some tape down. Now, like I mentioned, I'm not gonna tape it down because I'm just kind of like doing this as an example. I'm just gonna put some pattern weights there. And what I'm gonna do is from this line right here, I need to go out 0.81. So 0.81 is like 13 out of 16. So I'm gonna take my see-through ruler like this. I'm gonna put it right out, right at that and I'm gonna go 13 and, and 13 sixteenths. 
So I'm going to go one over from the third, the 12 line, and I'm just going to make a line all the way out right there. Now, after I do that, I'm going to definitely make sure that I'm going to merge back into my seam allowance. So it's right there. This is where you want to take your hip curve ruler to pretty much kind of, you don't want to peek. So you kind of want to go out just a little bit right here and then grade from the top all the way down with your hip curve ruler. Okay. And then that becomes your new, and then you want to kind of grade out and then back in towards the hip line. All right. So that's what you're going to do. I'm going to make my line a little bit darker so you're able to see it. All right, so now that I went ahead and darkened that line, you can see what it will look like, and you just cut this new pattern and sew five eighths of an inch seam allowance, all right? So that's how you, you know, determine your sizing. Now, I'm going to give you the sizing for the hips. So I only did two sizes, an 18 and a 20. So finished garment measurement for the front pattern piece for the hips is 27, and then Finished garment measurement for size 20, just for the front pattern piece is 28. Now in terms of the back pattern piece at the hips, a size 18 is a 24 and a size 20 is 24.75. 24 now how you find out your hips is you take the front that you measured, which is 27, add it to the back, which is 24, and that gives you a circumference of 51 inches. You would do the same thing to the sides 20. All right. Well, that's it for how to size up the pattern and what size you need to cut. So let's go ahead and get into the sewing finally. All right. So let's go ahead and get sewing with the pattern. So I went ahead and picked up both for different reasons. So I pretty much needed this size for these shorts. So even though I did cut out the smaller sides, and I was going to make the size 20. So I actually cut a waistband of a 18 because it gave me a 34 inch waist. And then I also cut the pattern of 20 for the hips. So basically what I'm doing is making, I did do some, some grading or whatnot to make sure that the waistband will fit on the waistband for the size 20 for the hips. All right. But I did cut both of these patterns. So basically the sewing is the same, no matter which pattern you have, the smaller sides or the bigger sides, there's nothing different with the construction of this garment. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the sewing. So the first thing you want to do is grab pattern piece number one, and I'm not going to show you how to do this, but you're going to make your pleats on the front and your darts on the back. Now, if you did not look at my video, Butterick 6901, where I walk you through how to do pleats, go back to that video, watch how I did pleats, because you're just gonna take one and move it over to the left, uh, based across on both of these pleats right here. I'm gonna bring it forward so you can see. You're just gonna basically do it in the same direction, no worries. So basically your pleats are going towards the side seams, okay? And then you're gonna press them flat. The darts, when it comes to the darts, you're gonna press your darts towards the center back seam, all right? So go ahead and do your pleats and your dart, and then come back and we'll continue. All right, so now that I have the, this is the back, the darts are done, looking amazing. And I also have the front, I'm gonna show you that. This is the front, the pleats are done, okay? So I'm gonna show you on the other side, okay? Now, what you are looking at is the front facing up. Now, I one thing I wanna tell you to do is go ahead and mark out your fly front, where your fly front is going to go. So, all you need to do now, remind you, this is the right side when wearing it, but it is a personal preference. If you prefer to um, unzip towards the left or the right, that's completely up to you. I am making mine on the right pants leg to where I could, you know, unzip it the way I want to, like you see in the photo, right? So all you're gonna do is go ahead and line up your, your um, right or left, whichever way you wanna make it, and you're gonna make lines all the way down and mark that dot, all right? So that's why you see that blue, and that's why I transferred it right here, all right? So don't forget to make that 
line. We already did our pleats. This is what it looks like. That's why you see the two pleats right there for my front. All right, so we're gonna be working on the front right now. And the next thing you want to do is grab pattern piece number 14. We're gonna start working on our pockets, okay? Now, I know the pocket said to cut two of lining. I don't want another color or anything like that, so that's why I am just using the same fabric. But if you wanna contrast, you can do so as well and use some scrap from your stash, all right? So with right sides together, you know what the right sides are. I'm just gonna uh, move one out of the way but you're gonna do this for both the front and the back pattern pieces as well. So what you're gonna do is with right sides together, you're going to pin, I'm just showing you on one pocket, you could do the other pocket, pin at the notch, pin at the top and pin at the bottom and then pin along that seam allowance for your pocket. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my, my Pattern piece number 14, which is the pocket. I have that attached to the side seam using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end. And you are just sewing this edge right here at the pockets on both fronts. After you do that, trim it down, press your seam allowance towards the pocket and under stitch. It's the same scenario that you would have in Butterick 6901. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I actually have the front done, I this is my front. So basically I attached the pockets, I uh, right tights together, 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, trimmed it down, pressed the seam allowance towards the pocket. After I pressed the seam allowance towards the pocket, I went ahead and understitched after I understitched and pressed it to the pockets to the inside, I went ahead and top stitched. So that's basically step two through four is what we did. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and grab pattern piece number 15. And what we're going to do is basically um, attach with right sides together. We're gonna pin the side front to the pocket. Side front and pocket, I should say. So what we're gonna do, make sure you have right sides together. So this side goes to this side and this one goes to this side, okay? And what you're going to do, make sure you are just pinning on, I'm gonna move one out of the way, but make sure what I'm gonna do is lay it out. And I'm just gonna make sure that I am matching the pocket at the bottom and around, okay? So what I'm gonna do is definitely pin right here and I'm just gonna pin all the way around the pocket. So go ahead and pin around the pocket now. All right, so now that I have the pockets pinned all the way around using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch, back stitch at the beginning, so all the way around and back stitch at the end. After you do that, go ahead and finish off the seam allowance for your pockets. You're gonna do that on both pockets. So go ahead and do that now. All right. So now that I have my side front and pocket done, now I'm going to show you how you put this on, why, why it looks like this. So what you want to do is you want to basically line it up, make sure that those two notches are matching up and you're going to pin at this side seam right here. Just put some pins there to keep it in place. And then you're gonna do the exact same thing for the top to keep it in place. Make sure that it's matching up. Those two notches at the top match up. And then you're just gonna pin that in place as well. All right. So after you pin it in place, what you're gonna do is go to your sewing machine and you're gonna base here. And then you're gonna base across the top. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so let's go ahead and work on this fly. So I'm going to try to show you as easy as possible. So the first thing we're going to do is attach our, I'm, I'm going to attach my, um, they call it the right fly. So this is pattern piece number 12. And what we're going to do is attach that first. So what we're going to do is with right sides together, make sure you are matching up your dot at the bottom right here. Make sure you are matching that up and it should match up at the top as well. And you are going to pin right sides together. 
And one thing I want to mention is make sure you have already search your crotch seam in order to do this. Now I do have from the dot down sewn already. All right. So go ahead and sew uh, this down using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then you're going to press it to the inside. I'm sorry. Then you're going to press it and then I'll show you what to do next. So go ahead and do that now. All right. So now that we have the right fly, sewn on, what we're gonna do is go ahead and pull it out and making sure that the seam allowance is on the side of the facing, we want to top stitch as close to the, on the right fly facing, we're gonna do about a fourth of an inch all the way down. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my right fly facing um, top stitch, Grab your zipper and what we're going to do is line up our zipper with the edge of that top stitching. And what we're going to do is we're going to pin on this side. So I'm just going to pin on this side of the zipper, but make sure that it's lined up kind of, you don't want it to go too far over because you don't want it to catch any of the stitching whatsoever, but you want to be as close as possible. I'm just putting mine's like right, right, lining it up right with the top stitching. And then you're going to pin all the way up. So pin all the way up now. Now that I have it pinned, you could pin this side actually, because you're going to be sewing on the opposite side. So I'm just going to move it over and pin this side and baste down on the opposite side of the pins. So let me pin this side. And I'm going to base all the way down to that dot. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have it basted it right here, what I'm gonna do is turn it to the inside. And now you could give it a press if you need to, but now what I'm gonna do is pin along that blue line and we're gonna stitch that into place. So I'm just gonna pin along that blue line that you see, and then go to my sewing machine and stitch it in place. Right. So let me pin all the way up and then go to the sewing machine and stitch it in place. All right, so let's go ahead and stitch that in place now. All right, so now that we have the line that's blue stitched in place. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and grab our left fly. And now what I did was with wrong sides together, I went ahead and folded in half, finished off the bottom and finished off this side edge. So what we're going to do is put it on this side of the zipper. So basically we're just going to put it right underneath and just basically pin with both of those lined up, making sure that you match up the dots and the notches. You want it to be even all the way across, okay? So make sure you add, you match up those two dots that you have on your, um, match up the dots and I'm going to pin and then I'm just gonna pin all the way up because all you're gonna do is just baste it on now, before I baste it on, grab you something to mark your top with. So I'm just gonna get my white chalk and what I'm gonna do is just mark right on my zipper teeth. And the reason why I'm marking on my zipper teeth is simply because when I um, attach this part by pressing it under 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and attach it, I know the where my top portion is supposed to be and it will lap over perfectly fine. Okay. So make sure you march where the top portion of your, um, top of your shorts or pants starts. Okay. So I marked that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and base this left fl uh, fly on. Okay. So go ahead and base that down to that dot now. All right. So now that I have the zipper basted on, on this side, make sure you have pressed under three eighths of an inch seam allowance from the top to that dot. Okay. So I have mine pressed under. 
Now, what I'm gonna do is open it out, and what I wanna do is match up the top with this right here, just like this, and I'm going to pin all the way down to that dot. Now, just make sure you are just pinning on where the zipper is. You don't wanna pull pin on your shorts, all right? So just go ahead and pin that now. Now that I have it pinned using three eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end, you're using a regular length stitch. So go ahead and do that now. Now that I have the left fly sewn on at that three eighths of an inch seam allowance, what I'm going to do is open it out. If you notice, I pinned this portion over. Now what I what you can do, this is a, your personal preference, you can give it a good press and you want to top stitch down to keep this portion as close to the zipper as possible without sewing on the zipper, all right? So what I'm gonna do is because I've already pressed mines, what I'm going to do is definitely just pin that all the way up. So I'm just gonna pin. And I would advise you to use probably a zipper, your invisible zipper foot if you have one, or a zipper foot, just not the regular um, foot that comes with your machine in order to do this. You wanna sew close to the zipper, but you do not wanna sew on it, and you do not wanna have any threads near that zipper, okay? Now what I'm gonna do now that I have it pinned, I'm just gonna go ahead and top stitch close to the zipper without sewing on it. You could also open it out and get as close to it as possible, just sewing near that zipper without sewing through the zipper, all right? So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the fly front completely done, we already stitched that on, it's looking good. This is what your fly should be looking like. Next thing you're gonna do is go ahead and grab your back pattern pieces. Well, before you do that, you're gonna sew up your center back seams, okay? So. What you wanna do, well, before I do the center back seams, what I'm gonna do is with right sides together, we're gonna to do our end seams first. So have your back seam, and with right sides together, you're going to sew your front to your back at the end seam, which is this seam right here, okay? So I'm going to make sure I match both of mine up with right sides together. And definitely make sure you finish off the seam allowance to your back pattern piece with your serger at that curve. So I'm gonna do mine af right after I finish sewing my inseam. So go ahead and pin your inseam matching that notch. Pin at the top and pin along your inseam. So go ahead and do that now for both inseams. Now using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end and finish off your seam allowance. Once you do that, go ahead and finish off your crotch curve for both shorts, for both legs basically. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the end seam sewn together, what I'm gonna do next, I'm going a little out of order because they want you to say, sew the side seams next. I'm not doing that. I'm gonna go ahead and sew up my crotch curve now if you notice mine is not sewn searched yet and that's simply because i am going to surge it but i want to show you how to pin it first so you should have your seam allowance surge mines will be surged before i completely sew it together so what i'm going to do is right at the end seams i'm going to make sure that the seam allowance is matched up and i'm going to pin there then I'm going to definitely go ahead and match up. Now this is my back. So my center back, I want to make sure that that is matched up as well and pin there. And then I'm just gonna basically make sure that everything from that zipper all the way along the curve is pinned in place, okay? So make sure that you're pinning from that dot in the front where you stop sewing, you're gonna pin from that dot all the way up the back. So I'm gonna pin at that dot where I stop stitching or basting, I should say. And I'm just making sure everything is pinned. So go ahead and pin that entire 
crotch curve from the dot in the front all the way through to the back now. Making sure you do, you have everything flat and you have no bunching going on underneath. So go ahead and pin that crotch curve now. All right, so now that I have the entire crotch curve pen using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and a regular lint stitch, start at that dot where you finish sewing your fly front area using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and sew all the way along your crotch curve and back stitch at the end. Once you do that, you could finish off your seam allowance, but it should be finished already. You could do that separately or together. That's completely up to you. So go ahead and do that now. So now what I'm gonna do is put the side seams together and with right sides together, I'm gonna sew my side seams. So make sure you have right sides together and you pin from top to bottom making sure you match up that seam allowance and the notches, okay? So let me make sure I have everything looking good. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to flip it over because I like pinning from the bottom up. So I'm going to pin from the bottom up, from the hemline all the way up, but first I'm gonna match up my notches on the side seam. Now this is the front looking up at me. I'm going to definitely pin at the bottom and pin the length of my side seams. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the side seam pin using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end, and sew your side seams on both sides. Finish off the side seams when you are have sewn it back stitch at the beginning and at the end, sew your seams and finish them off. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the side seam sewn, it's looking really good. One thing I wanna mention is this portion right here of your fly front, what you can do is you can sew this down, just kinda like do a couple of stitches to keep both of these two together. You just wanna sew. So I'm just going to kinda like tack it together there like start about right here and just tack it down. That's it. Nothing more than that. And that's just to keep those two together. All right, so I just put a pin there so I don't forget to tack that down. So the next thing we're gonna do is make our belt carriers. Now, it's basically the same thing as Butterick 6901, which is the uh, sew along I did right before this sew along. So I'm not gonna walk you through how to do carriers. I feel like you will be able to do carriers on your own with no issues. So we're gonna skip that portion, um, but I will have carriers on my pants. So all I'm gonna tell you to do, I'm not gonna walk you through it completely, but I'm gonna move my shorts over to the side for a quick second, grab my carriers, and basically you're gonna do it just like you did in the last sew along, butter it six, nine, and zero, one. You're just gonna fold it in half and then you're just gonna sew both sides. So go ahead and make your carriers now. All right, so grab your carriers. I already kind of did this for you, but what you're gonna do is with the right sides together, you could go and give it a press if you want to. That's what I did. And then you're just going to sew um, this raw edge using a fourth of an inch seam allowance. After you do that, you're gonna leave the ends open. After you do that, you're gonna turn it right side out. All right, so I decided to put a safety pin at the end, and what I'm going to do is just take the safety pin, go inside, and turn it right side out, being sure to go slowly to where the safety pin doesn't pop off. All right. So just go ahead and turn it right side out now. Now that I'm at the end, all I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull it all the way through. And that's how you turn your carriers right side out. Now what I'm gonna do is go and give it a good press and stitch on both long edges, all right? So I'm just gonna basically stitch on both sides. So go ahead and do that now to your carriers. All right, so now that I have my carriers pressed, what I'm gonna do is um, break these up into five pieces 
and you want to do it like three and a fourth. So what I'm gonna do is right, I'm gonna line it up and at three and a, and a fourth, which is about right here, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut that and I'm gonna use that as a guide to create five total carrier loops. All right, so go ahead and cut all five of your carriers now. All right, so now that I have my carriers, what you're going to do is you're gonna put your carriers where your pleats are in the front and your darts are in the back and one in the center, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do them, but this is kind of self-explanatory. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your carrier about a half an inch below the basting stitch that you have in the front at your pleats. And then you're just going to pin. And then I'm gonna do that to the other side as well, same process, about a half an inch below. And then just pin that in place as well. And then in the back, turning it over to the back, I'm going to basically put it about a half an inch below the top, basically a half an inch below the top portion of your shorts and pin there. I'm going to put one at the back and one at the other dart. So go ahead and do that now. Now that I have my carriers in place, all you need to do is go and go to your sewing machine and baste them in place. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my carriers on, they're looking good. So one thing I'm gonna tell you to do is you could do this right now or you could wait until after you have your waistband on. But I'm uh, when I go back to the sewing machine, I will go ahead and search the hemline of my pants do not press them up yet but i'm gonna go ahead and search that so the only thing left for us to do is to finish off our carriers and our waistband so go ahead and move your shorts out of the way for right now grab your waistband which is pattern piece number 18 this should be cut one and interface one all right so the first thing you're going to do is the top portion, create a 5 8 of an inch basting stitch because you're gonna press it. So what you're gonna do is press it in and then you're gonna trim it down to 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, all right? So go ahead and do that now. All right, so since I went ahead and pressed the top of my waistband, which will be in case and you know, on the waistband when you basically stitch in the ditch. Um, I trimmed it down to 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create decorative, you know, I want it to be a little decorative on the inside, right? So what I'm gonna do is take the bias tape. This is just some scrap Ankara fabric that I used for a different project a while ago. And all I'm going to do is basically put this just like this and I'm gonna stitch to where this becomes one all the way across. So if you are using some bias binding, all you need to do is just basically do the same thing and just basically wrap it around and stitch on the right side all the way across. So go ahead and do that now if you are creating some bias binding now. All right, so now that I have my waistband finished at the bottom, go ahead and grab your shorts. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna open out the zipper and we're gonna turn it to where the back is facing you. So what we're gonna do is right at the back, you have some notches. So I'm going to clip into where my notches are so I can really see those. So there's one here. All right, so I have my notches right here and it match up with the notches in the back. So I'm going to definitely pin at those two notches. And then you have some dots. The dots meet up. So I'm gonna show you the pattern piece just so you could see it. So I was talking about these two 
notches right here. It meets up with your center back seam. So you need to pin those and then you will have some dots. These two dots right here should meet up with your side seams, okay? So let's go ahead and find our dots. So my dot is marked in white because it's by the horse and that meets up with my side seam. So I'm gonna turn it and show you that that should meet up with my side seam right here. And I'm going to definitely pin. And I'm gonna stick some pins also um, in between to keep everything together, all right? And then you're gonna pin the front, making sure you match up the notch that's in the front of your pants as well. So let me find my notch. So the front will extend a little bit and that's perfectly fine. You will need that extension at the front as well. So don't be alarmed or anything if it's extending in the front. So I'm gonna continuously pin the rest of my waistband all the way around, matching up my dots as well as my um, notches. So go ahead and pin all the way around now. All right, so now that I have my waistband pinned all the way around, I'm gonna start in the center back using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and sew all the way around to one end. And then once I do that, I'm gonna come back to the back, center back, starting back at the center back and then sew 5 eighths of an inch the opposite direction, all right? Once you do that, trim it down and then press your seam allowance up towards the facing. Go ahead, or the waistband. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the waistband on, I have the waistband seam allowance pressed up towards the waistband. Now make sure that when you attach your waistband, if you were doing the carriers, that you had your carriers pressed down. You did not want to accidentally stitch your carriers onto your waistband, okay? Um, the next thing you're gonna do is take this portion, fold, onto itself and then you're just going to stitch right close to that edge. So you're gonna do that on this side and then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Yours may extend a little bit further as well but you're just going to definitely fold it in half and we're just going to pin right here. And then what you're going to do, we are just basically a stitching right down close to that edge. So basically it's, this one is five eighths of an inch and then this one is as close to the edge as possible. All right, so go ahead and do that now. Stitching on both sides. Now that I have this, um, the, the ends trimmed, so I'm gonna just trim it down. Cut the corner a little bit. And then I'm going to turn it right side out. And if you need your point turner, grab your point turner so you can poke out any sharp corners or edges and get a good finish as well. And now what you're going to do, you're almost done with your shorts. So I'm going to turn it right side out. And all I'm going to do is basically go all the way around, giving it a good press making sure that my seam allowance is pressed up and I'm just gonna press it all the way around just like this and making sure that I tack in the seam allowance right there. But I'm going to pin on the right side of my short. So let me clean up the loose threads and I'll be pinning on the right side of my shorts about an eighth of an inch from the bottom of the seam allowance. Now I want to make sure you know, do not start like at the front, the, you wanna start a little behind that zipper area right here when you stitch in the ditch, okay? So make sure you pin all the way around about an eighth of an inch over that seam line. So go ahead and do that now. 
All right, so now that I have the waistband pinned all the way around, now one thing I will mention is if you are putting a label in like I will be, I advise you to go ahead and put it in the center back like I will be doing before closing up your waistband. So I will go ahead and put mine in. So when you see it, seeing this, you will see that I have a label in the back of my, my shorts, not pants, all right? So you could go ahead and do that. After you sew on your label, go ahead and stitch in the ditch all the way around to encase that. Now, another thing I wanna make sure that you know is this edge right here where your zipper, make sure that that is kept to the inside as well, tucked underneath, all right? So go ahead and do that now. All right, so I have the waistband stitched on. I stitched in the ditch to catch that edge, so it's looking good on the inside, good on the outside. I'm gonna make sure that I clip all of my loose threads um, also. Now, there's only two things that you really need to do, actually three things. So if you make carriers, make sure that you fold in about three eighths of an inch at the top and pin it at the top and you're going to stitch all five carriers. Now I'm gonna, I left one undone. I just have pins right there because I have to stitch it, but I'm gonna show you how to do one. So what you're gonna do is take the top and go in about three eighths of an inch and then you're just gonna pin that to the top of your waistband, okay? And that's pretty much it. So I'm just gonna pin that in place for right now, and I'm just gonna st stitch them all at once, all right? Now, once you do that, all you need to do is press up your hem. You could press a fourth of an inch in and then press up one inch, and then you're gonna stitch your hem in place, all right? After you do that, the only thing left for you to do is put your bar closure right here, your bar, your bar tack, I think is what it's called, and then your hook and eye right here, okay? But I advise you to try it on, mark where you want it to be, how tight, how loose, whatever, you know, and then once you do that, you are all done with your shorts. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the video for Butterick 6946. So this is the video for Butterick 6946 and 6947. It's the same pattern, just different sizes. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you make these shorts or Bermuda shorts, whatever you wanna call them, do not forget to tag me at rochelle.handbeat.design. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time. All right, so there you have it. That's the complete pattern review and the sew along for the shorts for Butterick 6946 and Butterick 6947. I hope you enjoyed this entire pattern review. Sit down with you guys as well as the sew along. And if you make this pattern, do not forget to tag me so I can share your creation with everyone on Instagram, YouTube alike, right? at rochelle.handmade.design. And also, don't forget to hit that, and since you made it this far, do not forget to hit that like button, subscribe button, also smash that notification bell so you are notified every time your girl uploads a new video. So I'll catch you in the next video, and as always, keep sewing.